When you work with a lot of assets, it's a good idea to organize them, and you can do that inside the project panel. You can also view assets in the project panel. So I'm going to show you how to do both in this lesson. To do this, let's go open up an existing project by going to Working Files, going to the Projects folder, and then double-clicking on 0406 Managing Assets. This project has a bunch of assets here inside the project panel, and no sequences, just a bunch of assets here. And we're going to organize these guys, plus take a look at them. So let's just run through what we see here inside the project panel. We've got all these various clips, and you can look at the icons. That icon tells you this is video and audio. Scroll down a little ways. This is going to be some kind of image file. A little bit farther, audio only, video only. So that's a quick way to look at things. This is called the list view. If you click on this, you go to the icon view, which looks for all the world like the thumbnail view inside the media browser. If I switch over to the media browser, and I navigate, let's say, to the working files folder, here we are in the Working Files folder, and by golly, this looks like the icon view too, So here it's called a thumbnail view. Well, there's kind of a justification for calling it the icon view over in the project panel because it's also a thumbnail view here. So here we've got the icon view, which looks for all the world like a thumbnail view. I'm switching back to the list view here now, and if I go to the panel menu, all panels have a menu in the upper right-hand corner, I click on that, inside here there's something called thumbnails. I click on that, and little thumbnails appear here. And at first glance, they may look kind of useless because they're so darn small. But you can increase the view of the thumbnails by sliding this little zoom over here over to the right. And now you get a better look at those thumbnails. And the thumbnails may not represent what the clip is all about. They generally are the first frame of a video file. So you may want to change the thumbnail view. To do that, you need to open up the preview panel. Now in CS55 and before, there was a little preview monitor in the upper left-hand corner. But in CS6, the developers decided they want to give you more real estate, and they didn't think that was necessary, particularly with the hover scrub. So it's not here, but you can access it by going to the panel menu and going to preview area. Now there it is. So I click on this first one to make it active. I can scrub through it here. When I get through it, let's say to this point, I'm thinking that is a better poster frame. So I click on this little camera, and now it's the poster frame down here in the thumbnail view. So if you want to work in the thumbnail view, and you want your thumbnails to be really representative, of what the clips are, you can open up this little preview monitor and then find a good thumbnail and click on this little camera to put the poster frame in there inside your thumbnail. But I'm going to go back to the list view, not the thumbnail view, because the thumbnail view is really kind of throwback. I'm going to click on that and turn that off. And I'm going to click off the preview area as well, because I don't really need that. And I'm going to shrink this guy back down to its regular size there. So I like to switch between this view and this view. These are the two things that I like. And this really is the way CS6 is oriented. Now, when you take a look at these guys in this view, in the icon view, you see this little icon down here. What that means is that this video file has a linked audio with it. That means that there's audio and video here. There's something else that these little guys can represent. If I start a new sequence by dragging this down to this new item icon, I'm going to create a new sequence here, and there it is. If you go back there, you see you've got these yellow or orange icons. What that means is that the audio and the video have been used someplace inside the sequence. They're used once if you hover over it. If I take the same clip and put it on here again, now if I hover over it, it'll say it's been used twice. And it says linked here. If I get rid of one of the audio clips here by unlinking it, which is a technique I'll explain later, but I'll unlink that to get rid of it and I'll delete it. I go back here, you'll see that the audio now says used once, whereas the video is used twice. That's what these little icons mean here. So that's how you can view assets and work with assets here inside the project panel. The view is very much like the media browser. If you watch that lesson, you can just hover scrub. Just take your mouse and just move it left and right. You're not holding down the mouse button here. You're just moving the cursor left and right to be able to preview the clip. If you click in the clip, then you get this little scrubber here that you can then slide through as well. And you can also use the J, K, and L keys. L to go forward, K to stop, and J to go backwards. All right. Let's go back to the list view because that's the view that's easier to work with when you're organizing things here inside the project panel. Now I want to alphabetize everything. If I click on the column that says name, that'll alphabetize them backwards. Right now it's alphabetizing them from the beginning of the alphabet toward the end. If I click on it, it'll reverse the order here. Click it again, it'll put it back in the proper order. But there are other ways that you can sort your assets here. Down along the side here, there are all kinds of other little bits of metadata about your clips. And so to better see those metadata, I'm going to slide this guy to the right there. Now you get a chance to see all the various things that are kept track of here inside the project panel. And the thing that I like to sort on sometimes is media duration. So I click on that, and it goes from the shortest duration, 
all the various images here are zero duration, of course. When I scroll down, though, we begin to see media duration, 10 seconds, 13, 13, 13. So you get to see that it's going from shorter to longer. And if I slide this little divider to the right, you get to see the whole thing. Right now, you see that that thing goes up, which means that as you go down, the duration increases. If I click that again, now it's going to go down, meaning that as you go down, the duration decreases, OK? And here's frame rate that talks about audio hertz and video frame rate, so two completely different things. Media start and end, those are the time codes that are on the clips, so that's not necessarily so relevant, but the duration is pretty relevant. And let me slide to the right here. There's a few more odds and ends in terms of the audio information, and then some other items over to the right. You can add or remove these things. If you just right click on this row here, you get something that says metadata display. Inside metadata display, you've got all these possibilities for metadata storage, but the one of interest here is the metadata that you see inside the project panel right there. So I click this disclosure triangle here and open that up. These are the various things that show up inside those columns. And I like the idea of media duration. That's all good. And I can uncheck some things. If I don't really want to see the media start or media end, I can uncheck those guys. The in point and the out point, I may not need that, but sometimes it's helpful. I scroll down a little bit more. I like this thing that says video usage and audio usage. I'll click video usage and audio usage like that. And now I'm done, I'll click OK. Now the video usage shows up here and the audio usage shows up here. And if I scroll down, you see that we've got a little drop down list here next to audio and video. It says two here, because that little bike riding thing was used twice. It says one here, because the audio was used once. So that's what that does. If I want to move things around, I can. I usually like to have the video duration right up toward the front. So I can take this column, just drag it over like that and put it right next to the label, for example, or even left of the label like that. The label is just a color that indicates what kind of asset this is. Let me kind of bring this guy in a ways here so we can get back to the normal view, or at least more or less normal view. There's another way to organize your assets, and that is to use bins. Bins are like file folders. They're just called bins here in Premiere Pro. And this little icon down here is the new bin icon. If I click on that, that'll add this bin. And when you see words or letters highlighted in blue like that, that means that if you start typing, you'll replace what's there. So I'm going to type in here video clips like that. And I want to put my video clips inside that bin. I'll scroll down. There's that little bin. It's now empty. If I click the disclosure triangle, nothing's there. So I'm going to select my video clips. This one here, I'm going to go down a bit and shift click on this one here to select all the ones in between. So I'm just going to check out the rest of the project panel here to see if I've got more video files, and I don't. So all I need to do now is just click on an icon or on the name and drag this group on down the project panel to this folder. If I go over here and hover over the little bin or over the word video clips, then that is how I drop it inside there. And now I've dropped all those clips inside that bin, which makes it easier to organize. And you can see them there by opening up. There they are. There you go. I'm going to make another bin now for audio. Click on this audio clips. Click on that one and command or control click on that one and drag that to audio clips. Now we're getting a little more organized. And one more bin for our image files. Like that. And take those guys. Click on the first one, shift click on that one, and drag them into image files like so. And you can have bins in bins if you want. If you click on a bin like that and then say new bin, it'll add the bin inside it. You open up this thing and Scroll down and you'll see the new bin now inside that one. I'll click on it and then press delete to get rid of it because I don't need that. But you can add bins in bins, subfolders if you want to call them that. Now that we have these things inside the bins, if I want to view the contents of a bin, it gets a little bit difficult if I want to see the icon view or the thumbnail view if you want to call it that. If I double click on a bin, it opens up in this separate window. That's because that's set inside preferences. I'll go to preferences here for a second. I go to edit preferences here in Windows. It's Premiere Pro Preferences in Mac. And I go over here to General. And here we got this thing called Bins. And you double click, it opens a bin in a new window. You Control or Command click, it opens it in place. Alt or Option click, and it opens it in a new tab. I kind of like the idea of opening it in place. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to use the Control key here in Windows. You can use the Command key in Mac. And then I'm going to double click on Video Clips. That'll open it up here inside this panel. If I want to see the icon view now, I can do that. That makes it a little bit easier than to access these guys rather than popping out another window. I'm not really fond of having a window fly out here. I like to stay inside here. But now the issue is how do I get back to the upper level? How do I get up one level? 
you do that by clicking this little guy up here, that moves you up one level back to this view. And we're still inside the icon view, so I'll go back to this view and you can see where we were. If I want to see the image files, I double click on it, that opens it up in this floating window, or I control or command click on it, and it opens it up here, switch to the icon view, and there's the thumbnail or the icon view. Now, a couple other things you can do inside here. I'm going to go back to the list view. To rename an asset here inside the project panel, you just click on it once and click on it again, and that highlights that blue thing. Or you right click on it and say rename, either way, but I like the idea of clicking on it once and then clicking it again, it's just a little bit easier. And if I want to change this from photo house JPEG to simply house, like that, then I can change its name. But I've not changed the name of the original file back on the hard drive. I've just changed the way Premiere Pro names it. Premiere Pro still knows that this house image is still connected to the original photo dash house stored on the hard drive. I can change this group portrait name here by clicking on it twice. Just saying group portrait instead of photo group portrait, like that. If I want to change this document passport, I can just call it passport, something like that. But the original file names won't change. This is helpful now if I want to use this as a different way to track things down when I do the alphabetization. It'll find them in that new order because I've changed the names of them. So that's a basic overview of some of the organizational features and media viewing features inside the project panel. As your projects get larger and you use more and more assets, it's really a good idea to organize your project panel by using bins and putting your assets into those bins.